the whole collaborative design environment really does set the stage uh, along with the very fast pace approach both for uh, getting equipment and making decisions. And uh, Elon makes it very clear what he wants to have accomplished. And then the teams work together uh, looking at the different subsystems and how do you, how do you uh, make compromises where you need to to achieve the, the result that Elon wants. And um, one of the things that really enables that is the whole incentive structure at SpaceX. And this is one of the things where we have, I think, uh, some real challenges when you get into an established bureaucracy. Established bureaucracies tend to have certain organizations, certain silos, and the, the incentives for the people working in those organizations is to benefit their particular organization. And uh, so in the mix, the overall goal of the program can get lost relative to you know, making decisions that benefit certain parts of the organization. At SpaceX, uh, Elon was very aware of this, and so he deliberately uh, would not pay that high of salaries a large part of the compensation for anyone who went to work at SpaceX was, uh, was stock options. And so your real compensation comes when the company succeeds. And that does a lot to align um, essentially business goals and interests that even if you're a, a propulsion individual, you want the TPS to succeed because if the TPS doesn't succeed, then the company doesn't succeed, and your stock options aren't worth anything. So it creates you know, a, a collaborative um, situation where people are, are pulling all towards the same goal and they're willing to make compromises. Um, one of the interesting things that I witnessed is that on the first Dragon capsule, the C1, there was a problem with one of the bulkheads in the pressurized um, volume that uh, one of the bulkheads had been undersized. And the structures group actually came to the TPS group and asked if they could place a spacer to put some of the loading of that bulkhead onto the TPS structure because we had margin in the TPS structure. And I mean, I would never, you know, see something like that at NASA. You'd go and redo the whole bulkhead. But what they wanted to do, they wanted to get the capsule out. And they had done the analysis and said, okay, we should be okay on this capsule to uh, transfer some of the loading, you know, from the bulkhead to the uh, TPS su support structure. And again, that, you know, allowed them to go forward. And the TPS guys took a look at it and decided, oh, yeah, it was within range. And so it was no problem. Um, and again, so that type of collaboration of give and take on the different design, um, you know, challenges and solutions uh, allows you to really move along quickly. And the other piece of it has to do with really the again, rapid pace of both acquiring information and uh, system data and making decisions. And uh, um, I had this one situation which has been related in several other uh, areas, but I think it's worth noting. When I was first working with SpaceX, um, probably a couple months in, and this is one of the first uh, meetings that we had to make a decision on maker buy for the uh, heat shield, for the peak heat shield that was going to be used on Dragon. And uh, um, I was still the new kid on the block, uh, but we had a, a design meeting, it must have been about 10 or 11 engineers and Elon, so we had all the major subsystems represented, uh, propulsion, TPS, structures, avionics, uh, and then Elon. And so we, the group was discussing whether, you know, make or buy for, for this TPS material. And I was at that time just listening because I was the new kid on the block and, okay, I've seen how do they, how does this, how does this uh, um, type of an organization function? And at one point, Elon looks over at me and says, well, Dan, what would you do? And so I explained to him, well, based on what I'm hearing, you know, I would actually do a, a, a make, not a buy, and, and here are the reasons for it. Um, explain that it wasn't that hard a process and that it would allow uh, them to optimize the PICA both for Dragon and then also have the capability for making TPS for future needs. And uh, so after explaining this for about uh, uh, three or four minutes, Elon leans back, no one says anything. Elon leans back and says, that's what we're gonna do. And that was the end of the meeting. And everybody stood up and left the room and I was somewhat shell-shocked, like what? 
And this is the first meeting we had on this. It's, you know, we hadn't had any prep meetings. It's the first time that we were all together discussing this. And that was it. And everyone walked out the door and went to work on, okay, how do we make PICA at SpaceX? It took me several days to get over that, that, wow, okay, did I say the right thing? You know, um, you know at NASA, we would have had, you know, many meetings uh, looking at, okay, what are the options? You know, what are the, the metrics we need to be you know, concerned with? What, what are the in impact on other subsystems um, before we came to a, a you know, critical decision of make or buy on, our, on a very important component.